Hello everybody, welcome back to another YouTube video. We're still looking at the Hack the Box Cyber Apocalypse CTF. I won't bore you with the details, let's go ahead and get right to it here. So, I am opened up on the interface with this little Cyber Apocalypse and JH party. Let's take a look at that emoji voting challenge. So, emoji voting, looks like uh, the challenge info here, it says a place to vote your favorite and least favorite puny human emojis. Uh, looks like it can be started on demand and does have a downloadable part. So let's go ahead and get the instance started and once that's spun up we'll go ahead and grab that url open that up in a new tab so we can go ahead and poke at it give it just a moment and uh let's see if it comes to life here not seeing that one okay now that that has finally come to life we can go ahead and download the little parts here and I've got that downloaded. So let's go ahead and make a directory for emoji voting. Hop over there and let's move that downloaded file from webemojivoting.zip over here. And let's go ahead and unzip that. So now we should have all the files. And before we dive into these, actually, let's, let's just take a quick gander at the Docker file to see where that flag might be stored. Um not included as a file in the Docker file here. Let's check out the challenge files. Oh, we have a, a database maybe. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay. So we are working Node, looks like. We're looking in some JavaScript files. So an web interface kind of defined out in JavaScript with Node.js running server side. We have a flag randomness table okay so that's something we should take note of and okay there will be our flag but there they have a placeholder so we'll have to potentially get that somehow um oh okay here's some functionality looks like we can vote with queries to the database where we are updating the number of votes on an emoji. <laughs> okay, great. And that uses a parameterized kind of argument or parameter there. So that we can actually really take advantage of or abuse. This next function, get emojis, has a tood. <laughs> I'm assuming that's meant to be to do, but I like tood a little bit better. I think we should, I, I want to start using that from now on for comments on to do. Tood. Let's check what this is doing. It doesn't have parameterization seemingly. Yep, looks like it's just using the variable that would be passed in. So that potentially has some SQL injection here. But the query that it's using is from a select all from emojis order by clause. Now that actually throws a wrench in the works because typically just dumping stuff from the database would be very easy to do when you use explicit SQL injection, uh, in which case you can use maybe a union select to add more to the query and display something else with the results you may have expected originally. Order by might change the game for us a little bit because we can't do any of those quick and easy uh, or one equals one or union select things and add in other things. We, we might have to change this to some blind SQL injection technique rather than an explicit outright uh, and direct SQL injection technique. So good to see those functions here. Now let's kind of play with the website. So looks like I can vote and on an emoji. Uh, human <laughs> looks like a the poop icon. Okay, I can click on that and I can see the vote number going up here. I'm just going to open up my network tab and kind of view the tools with, with developer tools. I hit F12 on my keyboard. So if I were to click on that human one, I can see these results or these requests coming through. Looks like I am submitting a post request to slash API slash vote with the request headers. Oh, and a an request payload for the ID. So putting that together, if we get emojis, is that something that's going to end up happening? Our vote is this function that we can control with just the ID by clicking things. How does this, oh, there are other calls that are happening here. List is just like 
popping up. It, it's adding another request. Oh, like every couple seconds. There's a now there's a 16th request. Looks like oh, that is using the order. That list functionality looks like that maps to this get emojis. And since this is kind of a little white box thing, we could examine some of the other files here. Let's see what index.js is doing. Looks like this starts it up. But what is calling that kind of votes function? The emoji voting DB. Is that something that's, no. Are the, these aren't going to be in routes. Are they going to be in views? Let's check out what that index.peach does. It loads in some other JavaScript. Maybe this JavaScript calls it. That's out of static. So let's hop back to check out that static directory. JavaScript main.js. Okay, yeah. This has this add emojis functionality to get stuff from the database and display it out on the page. But get emojis looks like a function that will reach out and fetch from with a little post request to this endpoint on the API. Okay. Good to know. What kind of SQL are we working with? The, oh, this is SQLite. I'm going back to the database.js so we can see we're using SQLite. So we need some SQLite syntax all against this potentially vulnerable list call. So let's get started with maybe beating this thing up. I'm gonna go ahead and create a little Python script where I can import requests because I know I'm gonna be doing some web stuff so I can request out pages. I will go ahead and post to the URL for this. Actually, we can define that as URL. And then we'll go to that API list, right? Yes, that is what this calls. Uh, let's store that as a variable so we can go ahead and print out what that returns. I'll use that print.txt here. I'm just gonna go ahead and try this, see what happens. Obviously we aren't passing anything to it, so it just tells me, hey, missing parameters, good enough. So let's add in some data or parameters that we could supply. Uh, I'm using Sublime Sublack or the uh, Python Black linter right now. So when I save, some of my some of my characters might fly around. Forgive me on that. But we know that we need the order to be what did they use? They use count as a field in the database here. Yeah, count will be the integer of how many votes this has. So using that, okay, now it displays it all with that response but we need to do some injection here. So because we're in order by, we can't sanely use like an or one equals one. That, that logic just kind of doesn't make sense. I'm gonna use the comments here, uh, the dash dash or the hyphen hyphen to note a SQLite comment. But yeah, that SQL kind of just won't behave for us. Can we have like some nested queries? I'll add this DESC in here, and we will order by, I guess, a string selecting out count. So this kind of becomes evaluated to count DESC for descending. That looks like it works. If I order that in a different way, does that behave? What other things can we order by? What are other fields in here? Name, I suppose. Did that order properly? I'm not positive. If I pipe that to JQ, does it display it out? Kind of. But the count's a little wonky. But that's the same kind of response we had previously, isn't it? Let's order by ID, maybe. That looks like the same kind of structure. How about 
name. Same kind of structure. Emoji? Not all that helpful. Okay, how about ascending? Again, no change. Do these quotes get in the way? Ooh, that looked better. Now name is ascending. It's a different order here. What if I did count descending? So we have kind of the original. Good, 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 good. This count looks much better because the count is going down in the results as I scroll up. But we could totally change that to ID. And now it's in that reverse order of IDs. Okay, so we can use this nested thing. That was a little bit of troubleshooting to determine, can I use some parentheses to note something else in here? Um, since we're using SQLite, and if we're going to get into some, like, blind injection techniques, we might have to do some Boolean stuff, like figure things out if something is something else. Uh, so I want to Google, like, a SQLite if statement sort of thing. Um... I think case is the syntax for that. Case evaluates expressions in a list of conditions that returns based on the result of the evaluation. Case expression is similar to if then else in other languages. So case something when, is when always necessary? How's this look? Give me an example. So return out count, maybe, when a condition is met? Um, let's experiment with that. So the syntax would be case count when one equals two, maybe, like some logic that we know will fail, then we want result one, else something else. Count is already kind of the singular thing that I'm checking though. That's, that's weird to me. ID. How about that? So on a false condition, ID should be what we descend. Something went wrong. What's going on? Case. Oh, the case expression? Hmm. Maybe that needs to be like what it's evaluating out to. So case one equals two, when that's true, like one being the evaluated true there, then count is going to be what we descend by, otherwise ID. How about that? No. Does that need to be, here's some, some stack overflow goodness. Let's see what we're doing. Select all case when, oh, they don't even use like another condition in there. So when one, that should always return true, right? No, when one equals one, something went wrong. What's the issue there? Troubleshooting, troubleshooting, troubleshooting. That's what we do. That syntax is way broken. Case when something equals some condition, then this end. Oh, does it need an end at the end? Oh my gosh. Oh goodness. <laughs> Was that the problem all along? Oh, totally. Okay. So, oh my goodness. I'm super sorry. I should learn to read. 
So when one equals one, then descend by ID. If we were to use uh, a false condition, this else will evaluate, right? So now we're descending by count. Okay, so we have some logic that we can determine here. Now we kind of want to determine if we can leak things out using this back and forth threshold of some true statement versus some false statement. So case when, and let's try and grab some value. Well, let's do like a select one. That should still return ordered by ID. Yeah. How can we kind of test on this? How can we kind of, uh, I guess, return whatever comes following this. Can we select like a one? No. Hmm. That order by is still gonna just make it annoying. That's just gonna be weird. I guess we'll I guess we'll use count and ID as our as our threshold something to, to verify. We still have the logic in place. So ID will be descending. So we can just check if the first element's ID is 12. If it's not, then we know that we're in something else. So now we need to try and determine some specific thing as part of something that might be in the database. Uh, because we're in SQLite, I'm going to go check out my own notes in my miscellaneous repository because I have kind of a, a little cheat sheet, SQL injection syntax cheat sheet to leak out stuff. But we do know already a little bit of the structure because we have this database here. So we know there's a flag random table, but we first need to know the full name of that flag table. Uh, so let's close out of these and then let's try and get maybe one column from a table, but we need to leak table names. In SQLite, we can group concat name from SQLite table that. <laughs> Will this work for me? Now, that syntax will have all the tables displayed out, but we can only kind of verify one character at a time. Can I substring or something in SQLite? Looks like it. Substring takes a string and a start and a length. So let's do substring on everything that might come from this. I think. Uh, and then one and one. So start position can be one, index can be one. Uh, and we wanna check if this is a, like the letter F maybe for flag. Which table will come first? I guess emojis would come first and then flag. Like alphabetically, wouldn't it? So let's turn word wrap on. Maybe E. So let's check if we get count. Oh, no, we broke something. What's the issue? We select from the substring with this whole thing as a string. And Oh, this select statement needs to be wrapped, right? Because this is our, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to understand my parentheses. This nested portion is the string that we pass into substring. This is the substring call, and this is the select statement, and we're checking if that value that's returned is equal to E. Nope, still failing. Hmm. T 
do I need that there? Let's use the single quotes again, just to try it. Can I get a single character, maybe? Like a uh, SQLite CHAR? No, 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 I just want a, a character. String composed of values in the ASCII table. So CHR of what would E be? I think I, I need to use ORD for that in Python. 101. How about that? Select all of the names from the SQLite master where the type is equal to table. And that string that's returned will still die. I feel like I'm getting mixed up in some parentheses here. Case when select a substring of group concat is table. And then those arguments get passed. Check if that when is equal to 101. That all seems fine. Maybe we don't need to concatenate things. Oh. Uh, how about that? When no. Oh, okay. So now we're by ID, so that had failed. Can we specify like F in that case? Yeah, that went by count now. Perfect, that's much better. Let's um, try to use the select, maybe? And let's specify that we want the name to be like the flag table. Oh, how about that? That's good. Now, if I had the wrong letter for the start, now we're decreasing by ID. Cool, okay. So that's a that's a a decent proof of concept for our boolean logic. Finally. <laughs> now since we're just getting the name and checking it, we can determine maybe a the position and kind of leak out the full name. So let's try a while loop. Let's get a list of leaked data. I'm going to define that as a list here. Uh, and let's import string, I suppose, because we want to be able to loop through like every single kind of character. So let's do for character in string dot printable. Um, let's just do a proof of concept. Let's get this. I'll take this here and we want to get the position that we'll search at. We want the position to be the length of the leaked data so far. So when we were checking the first index, the first position, it would have been empty. So that I think should be plus one. Our position needs to have a, a little offset there. So let's add an F string portion so that our position 
can be filled in smartly based off the amount of leaked data that we have. Um, and this character that we're trying should be the value of the character that we're looking at. Character, right? Let's um, get the JSON data from that, I suppose. Yeah. And then let's print J0 to get the first item uh, and just verify that this will kind of work for us, maybe. We don't need to pass that to JQ anymore. Okay. So once we get to ideally a different letter, we should see a different response on one of these. Yeah. So this is looks like the seemingly the first character that we would have leaked after that flag underscore prefix. So eight, I'm assuming. So that will tell us that, okay, this is a true statement and everything else will be false. So we can check if this first index is equal to that response. And if it is, if that's a true response, then we will do leak data dot append that character that we're on. And then we'll stop this loop of those characters, right? So leak data will now have a new position or new length so that the position will be properly set and the character can iterate more so. Uh, so while we're Doing this, I suppose let's print out um, an F string, trying character. Uh, let's actually try to join together our leaked data with the character being added on to it. I have nested double quotes inside it, so that probably wouldn't behave. So when we find eight, then we get a two following it. Then we get an E and an F. Okay. I think this is carving it out for us. Amazing. <laughs> we did it. Now, how far will this go? Because we're looping forever, we might not, I mean, we're, we're not going to end, right? But because we've passed seemingly the hex values and we're going to end up looping through the entire, yeah. Now we just died because we actually ended up sending an ampersand and <laughs> didn't like it. So now we know our full flag table. Yeah. So I'm going to say flag, or I guess like table name can be that string. So now we need to select out a flag value. We know that we are going to be selecting the flag entry in the flag table. So we can change this. We can do flag as our substring from table name as we've just determined. And we don't need to use a where clause anymore or that and because that's the specific one that we want to look at. So let's try that. This might go for a while, but we can assume that a capital C is what we would like. Yeah? Perfect. Okay. Uh, CHTB is kind of what we w should end up getting. Perfect. I am going to add that start of that flag format in there and let's remove that print character here um so at that point we can just let it go <laughs> and let it try and leak out the flag right nice all right it's going took a little bit of troubleshooting but i think we got it everything set up I will uh, pause this recording and now let us wait for this to leak everything out. Ooh, 
I got an error because of that ampersand in here, which I'm assuming might be doing some weirdness. So uh, let's actually change up this loop printable or that, that pool of characters. Let's do um, string dot printable dot replace that ampersand with nothing. There we go. So that way we can remove that. Um, and everything that we had found thus far, I want to add into our leaked data so we know that we can uh, start it where we where we left off. I think that'd be much better. Let's see if we get anything from that. I think we got to cruise through the whole alphabet, but we'll see how we do. Oh, I'm stupid. I forgot to uh, use this rather than the string printable one. Let's try that again. <laughs> Okay, it also doesn't like percent signs, which is, I suppose, understandable. <laughs> Let's nerf that out just as well. Like we're kind of finding our own bad characters here. Nothing wrong with that. We know that we still have the proof of concept, so we'll just let it go. Also doesn't like dollar signs. Part of me wonders how many of these we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and run into. Um, if it's anything like any normal flag, it might just have underscores in here. Separated by kind of words. I think that it has been their, their flag format structure. So yeah, we're going to keep running into that issue. So let's change this up. Let's use um, string. Let, let's actually add in opening and curly braces and underscores. Actually, we should test for those at the end. So let's use string dot ASCII lowercase and string dot ASCII uppercase in case we need those. And let's add in the ending curly brace portion there. Now let's see how we do. Oh, underscore, right? That makes complete sense. Order me. <laughs> nice. Order me this. All right, I'll wait for this to go. All right, it has leaked out. Order me this juicy info. Um, didn't get the underscore and didn't get anything past uh, lowercase letters. Looks like it did find that ending curly brace. So I'm thinking that's where we're at. Uh, I think our final flag is going to be CHTB order me this juicy info. And of course, it'll keep trying stuff because of the while loop that we're in that while true. But that looks like our flag, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, uh, let's go try and submit this guy. And there we go. <laughs> All right. We did it. That challenge is over. That was a blind SQL injection with an order by clause that kind of got in the way so we wouldn't be able to use stuff like a union select, like and or 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 other kind of comparison things where you kind of needed to use a nested query using these parentheses to add another logic thing that we pull down or select some data. And because we have a little bit of know-how as to what a SQLite database might look like, and because we have this specific white box description here of, of the schema of the database, that will allow us to uh, kind of know better what we're looking for to find that flag table and then to get the actual flag value out of that table. So we did it. <laughs> that's it it took some python scripting it took a little bit of troubleshooting it took messing around it took me getting the syntax for a case when statement right but we finally finished it up so all right hey thanks so much for watching everybody i hope that was good i hope that was a fun one uh, I don't know. I, I think I've, I've showcased a couple videos with SQL injection like this or blind and Boolean based sort of injection where you just kind of toggle back and forth. But I think this was nice because the order by clause specifically, I don't think we've seen before, but you can still kind of use the same technique where you just logically search for something in a, in a nested operation. That's it. That's the end of the video. <laughs> and that's all I'm able to showcase and cover for this one. But thank you so, so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hey, if you like these Hack the Box videos for the CTF, let me know. Hopefully, I can get a few more recorded and put out. But uh, I'm having a good time with this, and I hope you have just as well. Thanks again to Hack the Box for letting me do some of these. But we'll keep it cruising. We'll keep them going. I'll record something else real soon. 
Thanks again, everybody. Please do those YouTube algorithm things. Would love if you could like the video, leave a comment. Would love if you could subscribe. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's tune out of this thing. Bye, everybody. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. With